we are discussing proximity. In the previous two videos, we talked about distance measures. In this video, we will talk about similarity measures. The high similarity between a pair of points indicates that the points have high resemblance. Low similarity indicates that the points are distant. Hi, I'm Dr. Shahriyar Hossein. You are watching one of the videos of the data science lecture series from computingforall.com. Today, we will discuss a similarity measure called Jacquard index or Jacquard coefficient or Jacquard similarity. Jacquard similarity has two versions. One is a set-based similarity measure and the other one is a vector-based similarity measure. Later, we will see that the vector-based Jacquard similarity measure actually covers the set-based similarity measure. Therefore, just knowing the vector-based one will be sufficient. Let us start with the Jacquard coefficient or Jacquard index, which is commonly known as Jacquard similarity. Jacquard similarity between two sets is a ratio of commonality between the two sets over all the items. If x and y are two sets, then the Jacquard index or Jacquard coefficient between two sets is computed using the ratio of the size of the intersection between the two sets and the size of the union of the two sets. For example, let's say x has the elements a, b, and c, and y has the elements b, c, d, and E. Then the intersection of X and Y is B and C because both X and Y have the elements B and C. The length of this intersection is 2. The union of X and Y contains all the unique items in X and Y. That is X union Y is equal to A, B, C, D and E. The union has five elements, hence the length of this union is considered to be five. Therefore, for given sets x is equal to a, b, c and y is equal to b, c, d, e, the Jacquard coefficient between x and y is equal to the length of x intersection y divided by the length of x union y. The length of the intersection is 2, the length of the union is 5, therefore the Jacquard value is 2 over 5, which is 0 0.4. Jacquard similarity varies between 0 and 1. A value of 0 indicates no similarity between the two sets. That is, Jacquard is 0 when there is no intersection or when there is an empty intersection. A Jacquard index of 1.0 indicates that the two sets are the same. As a result, their intersection and the union are also the same. Since the numerator and the denominator turn out to be the same when two sets are equal, the Jacquard index becomes 1.0. So far, we have uh, discussed the set-based Jacquard index. Let us talk about the vector-based Jacquard index, which is commonly known as weighted Jacquard index, or coefficient, or similarity. Weighted Jacquard index computed between two vectors or data points, x and y, where each of the vectors has a length of n is the summation of the minimum of two vectors in each dimension divided by the summation of the maximum of the two vectors in each dimension. Practically, the numerator is the intersection of two vectors and the denominator is the union of two vectors. Let us take a look at an example. Suppose we have a four-dimensional data set. That is, we have four features or four columns in the data set. 
let us compute the jacquard similarity between row 1 and row 3. Row 1 contains 10, 3, 3, 5. Row 3 contains 9, 4, 6, 4. Based on the formula, let us construct the numerator first. In the first dimension, which is feature 1 in this case, among row 1 and row 3, which one is minimum? That is, between 10 and 9, which one is minimum? Of course, 9 is the minimum, so we write 9 plus. Then, we are in the second dimension, which is feature 2 in this table. Here, among 3 and 4, which one is the smaller one? Of course, 3 is the smaller one, so we add 3. Now, in feature 3, among 3 and 6, which one is minimum? 3 is smaller than 6, so we add 3. In feature 4, among 5 and 4, which one is smaller? 4 is smaller than 5, therefore we add 4. We have 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 in the numerator part. Notice that the numerator is the summation of the minimum among the two vectors in each dimension. Now we will construct the denominator, which is the summation of the maximum among two vectors in each dimension. We go over each feature again and this time we pick up the maximum of the two vectors. In feature 1, 10 is larger than 9, so we pick 10. In feature 2, 4 is greater than 3, so we pick up 4. In feature 3, 6 is greater than 3, therefore we take 6. In feature 4, 5 is greater than 4, hence we pick 5. As a result, we have 10 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 in our denominator. The summation of the numerator is 19. The summation of the denominator is 25. Therefore, the weighted jacquard index between row 1 and row 3 is 19 over 25. This results in 0 0.76. Let us compute the jacquard similarity between row 1 and row 5. This results in 21 divided by 65. After pressing the numbers on a calculator, we get 0 0.32307693. That means row 1 is more similar to row 3 than row 5. Weighted jacquard similarity may vary between 0 and 1. A value of 1 indicates that the two vectors are the same. A value of 0 indicates no similarity between the two vectors. Notice that the set-based jacquard similarity we discussed earlier in this video is a special case of weighted jacquard similarity. In the set-based jacquard similarity, the weight of an item or feature can be either 1 if the item is present in the set or 0 if the item is absent. Using the same example sets, x equals a, b, c and y equals b, c, d, e that we discussed earlier, the features are a, b, c, d and e. We can write x and y as two rows of the table that has the features a, b, c, d and e. For a set X, we have A, B, C, therefore the row has 1s in features A, B and C. The rest of the cells have zeros because those features do not exist in set X. For set Y, we have B, C, D, E, therefore we are putting 1s in features B, C, D and E. The only feature that is missing in set Y is A. So we put a 0 in feature A for the row Y here.
Now we can compute the weighted Jacquard coefficient between row x and row y. Take the minimum of row x and y in each column and sum up the numbers for the numerator. We have 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 2 in total. For the denominator, take the maximum in each dimension and sum them up. We have 5 ones added. The total is 5 in the denominator. Hence, we have 2 over 5. The result is 0 0.4, which is exactly what we had using the set-based Jacquard index for the sets x and y. Therefore, the weighted Jacquard similarity covers the set-based Jacquard similarity. The formula for weighted Jacquard similarity is actually an equivalent of the set-based formula. That means the numerator of the weighted Jacquard similarity represents the intersection between the two vectors, and the denominator represents the union of two vectors. Am I creating more theoretical confusions here? Here is the explanation. You have two vectors. The first vector contains 10 in feature 1. The second vector contains 9 in feature 1. What is the intersection between two numbers 10 and 9? The intersection is 9. Let us say you have 10 oranges. I have 9 oranges. What is the commonality between your and my positions? Nine oranges are common. Therefore, nine is the intersection. Notice that in weighted Jacquard similarity, by taking the minimum between two numbers in a feature, we are actually doing an intersection. Then we are summing up the intersections in each dimension. Similarly, the maximum between two numbers is giving us the union. When we sum them up in each dimension, we get the entire union in the denominator part. This is the theoretical explanation of the weighted Jacquard similarity. I hope the concept is clear. We'll discuss more about similarity measure in the upcoming lessons. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell-shaped button to receive notifications when we publish any new video. I'll see you next time.